Thank you, Kate uh, and Awita, um, Sigrid um, and Katrina. It's, it, it's fantastic to be here. And I was especially interested to talk about this um, with, with the backdrop of what's going on in the world right now. Um, I don't think any of us will have faced a situation like, like we have with COVID-19 in our lifetimes. Um, and what's been amazing for me is seeing uh, the way the world has come together, the way people have been collaborating uh, in ways that I have never seen before. So for all the bad that's coming out of this terrible time and, and what people are having to go through, there's also going to be in exceptional innovation, um, people doing brave things uh, that would never have thought of doing, done before. And, and a lot of that comes from people need to, to keep going. Um, for artists, you know, they need, to, they need to sell their paintings. They need to continue to be able to operate. And for brands, they're in the exact same situation. And so with that backdrop today, um, I, I thought I would talk you through some of our main principles we use as an agency. But particularly, I wanted to touch on the fact that now is an incredibly different time in looking at collaborations and, and why it's especially resonant is because um, people are looking for connection right now. You know, now is the time for brands and people to show who they really are um, and for people to have a voice, but to be able to be part of the good that, that, that um, can come out of this. And, and, and art obviously is a good thing. It inspires, it uplifts, you know. So I think with that backdrop, I think that we're in a territory where a lot of exceptional things can be created and a lot of things that perhaps wouldn't have happened before you know for artists now is the time to be thinking of doing and arts organizations thinking of doing these sorts of things um and and you know kate touched a little bit on, on what we do our collaborations have been from day one something that we were have been incredibly passionate about some of the work we do is is with brands themselves some of the work is for um high net worth individuals who want to do legacy programs um you know and and the world has changed a lot when we're talking about say a department store we've done a lot of work with various different department stores you know people aren't selling um things necessary they're they're selling experiences they're trying to inspire they're trying to entertain so art has you know like no other art has the ability to to inspire to entertain but it also also in lots of respects to educate you know some of the work we've done with people like selfridges with project ocean art was the single um, most important thing we did in terms of, um, you know, creating behavior change, nudging people to see what the world could look like um, if we didn't make some action, take some action about how we how we treated the ocean in the world. And a lot of that was seeing things through the journal uh, through a, an artist's lens um, was what made people stand up and listen and empathize and 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 hear what we were saying. Um, so as a starting point for that, now I'm sure a lot of you have collaborated in some way before already. And, and probably successfully. What I thought would be really useful today in these times is to really talk about some of the guiding principles we use as an agency when we're looking to collaborate. And like anything, um, go, doing things well means that you plan them well. Um, you're very clear on what the expectations are. You do your homework, you know, you set it up well. But I'm gonna go through some of our principles uh, and, and, and what's worked for us. And, and particularly, and this is sort of the nitty gritty bit, but often the detail is where things fall down so i'm also going to go through some of the some of the tips on things that have worked for us um potentially things that have not worked so well for us but where you should you know where, where you where you might be able to take some learnings into your own activity um and in terms i think most of you today are mostly um artists and with arts arts organizations so i'm i'm particularly going to shift to that angle um and we can ask some questions at the end um and, and I think the first, the, the first, the first piece I would, I would say really on this, and I'm not trying not to read on this, but um, is, is really about mutuality. You know, that's always a starting point for us. And, and, and this is really about um, anything you could create in terms of a collaboration should have a generosity of spirit. You know, that's what makes it sing. That, that's what makes it great. Um, and, and that mutuality comes from, is there mutual benefit to the relationship? You know, if a brand is trying to do a collaboration, then they should be thinking about how can I collaborate in a way that takes me into a new into a new space, opens up new dialogues and conversations for me, and 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 it is another way for people to experience and and, and see my brand. Um, and from the artist's perspective or the arts organization's perspective, um, they probably are looking at it through a different lens. But through that lens can be how can I go to a wider audience? How can I have more access? Um, how could I 
um, speak to people in a different way? How can I use this, this, um, this collaboration to give me time and space and funding and a platform to share my work in a different way um, and to try something that I haven't tried before? Um, so that is the starting point really about mutuality. And mutuality is also about reciprocity and about um, it should be something that equally benefits each other. You know, artists should be paid for the work um, if they're collaborating or arts organizations. Uh, it should be equally good for each party. They're each getting different things, but it comes from, from a, a space of everybody winning because you're creating something special together that wouldn't be created unless you were working together to do this. And, and that piece is, is, is really important. And it, it should you know, it shouldn't be transactional. And I think some of those things are the beginning pieces that, that we always ask people, you know, if you're a brand, do you like the artist's work? Do you respect what they do? You know, is there, is that something naturally that you could talk about why they inspire you, why you chose them? Um, and that answers some good questions for you about making sure that it's not too, too transactional in terms of, or bringing this person in because they happen to be hot right now, people are talking about them. No, is there a genuine interest there? And from an artist's or an art, art organization's perspective, that's even more important. Do you like what the brand does, what experiences they create, who they are? Uh, and that is an incredibly important starting point. If you don't have that respect there, um, then it's gonna be really hard for you to put your all in it, and from, from both sides. Um, but you have to have enough, you have to like the, pro the, the product or the people, what they represent, you know, what are their values? What, what is their vision? Um, that has to be very, very aligned. And when that alignment is there, amazing things can happen. Um, and, but you really, it, it needs to be a deep down gut feel. Does this feel good? Can I see myself working with these people, spending time? Um, the next piece, which is a really, really important piece, and this is kind of the boring piece, but we spend a lot of time on it. And I think that's why our collaborations have been successful. And, and I'm coming, particularly with the strategic comms hat on here, but due diligence, doing your homework. You know, for brands, when we do create an idea where we want to collab or an idea of collaborating with somebody, we usually start with a vision or something we're trying to achieve. Um, we keep it quite open because obviously that's where the artist comes in and that's where the magic happens. But we, we then, you know, we probably don't just look at one artist. We probably look at a bunch of people that we could collaborate with and we do a lot of background research on them. We look at what their footprint is, and that's usually digital footprint. That helps you as artists, one, to sell your work, but it also helps you in terms of if you wanna collaborate with people. In this day and age, we wanna know that you've got a reach. Um, we would do quite a deep analysis of, you know, who are your communities that support you? Uh, what are you interested in? Uh, what do you stand for? If we were to work with you, you know, which audiences could you help us reach? Uh, but then we look at that whole piece and that footprint, but then we also look, we do a very detailed press and background search uh, to see <clears throat> what, the, what the artist stands for, what they represent. And, and this sounds, you know, maybe a little bit over the top. What's really important about it is knowing that we are probably going to have to promote um, this collaboration in some way. So it means we will do interviews. It means we maybe do, do television. It means we need to know what else they've done and 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 how do they work with the press you know do they take do they give good interviews have you seen you know great tv coverage of them have you seen how they've worked with a brand before you know are they able to passionately speak about the collaboration are they are they do they look like they're they're in it for the right reasons do they look passionate do they do they look in, engaged um is is does it seem like it's really a good fit all of those things we also look from a brand's perspective to look have has this person done tons of collaborations? You know, for us, if we see a brand who's done loads and loads of collaborations at, in a short period of time, then that means as a brand, you're not gonna get that much cut through probably. Um, you know, we want to know that they can collaborate well, but equally that we're gonna get some share of voice. And I would say, if we look from the, from the artist's perspective, you know, you need to think, where, where is the brand itself? Is there something going on right now that you don't like that they're doing? Are they, trying to collaborate with the arts right now because they have other problems somewhere in, in, in their organization. How do they treat people? You know, all these things are really important things to be able to look at. And I especially talk about some of the things too about the due diligence, because we've done a lot of work with alcohol brands. They are big um, supporters of the arts. You know, for us, we have to be careful about things like problems with addiction in their past. You know, that's something in, in, in some instances it hasn't mattered. You know, if the people are, are you know, 
have, have, have managed things well. But equally, it's one of those things, if it's an alcohol brand, we have to be incredibly careful about that sort of thing too, because it might be something that's the first thing that the press brings up at some point. I also think it's really, really crucial. One of the big questions people ask me is, well, how did you choose that artist or that, that person to collaborate with? And I would say the number one thing for us has been about trajectory, understanding where the brand is in its life cycle and reputation, uh, and understanding where the artist or the arts organization is. We love to support talent on the up. You know, for us, working with somebody who is, is, is moving up and is engaged and wants to build their profile and grow, we find we produce much better collaborative work. They're passionate, they, they, they give it their all, and, and sometimes when people are so high profile, they don't put as much into collaborations. It is more a financial arrangement. So, um, and that's something too, that, that an artist needs to think about also on the brand's behalf. You know, where, where, what am I doing? Why, why is it helping them? Why would they want to work with me right now? Um, I'm going to move over to, to sort of the next piece in terms of how do you make this happen? You know, for us, the mindset we like to, to, to suggest to people is that they take a really long-term approach. It may not be that you're looking to do, um, it, it may not be that you're looking to do this forever, but it is something that looking at it with a long-term approach always creates better results. You know, we, we don't like it to be transactional. You may, for specific tactical reasons, work with an artist on a limited edition piece or a one-off specific project, but for artists, it's much better in arts organizations to work with somebody. You may start small, but it can grow and you have the ability with the platform you're creating to be able to, to, to widen that. Um, and and that, that, that creates a more openness to more creative collaboration and actually to create something, co-create something really, really interesting. Um, it also gives artists more time and space. You know, what we'd hope out of collaborations, the funding that goes behind a collaboration allows them to, to, to not only create something for the brand, but also then to, to keep themselves going and to support them in, in their other endeavors. And, and that's, and, and, and some of the, the, benefit equally that you're giving them is also raising their profile by working through you. They're going to reach more people that may, may in the end buy their work. Um, so that, that's a really important thing, thing, thing as well. Um, and then the next piece really is how do you collaborate? Uh, and I, what, I'd, what I'd say there is start with a terrific brief. You know, be really clear what you think you want to achieve out of this. And that piece is, is about getting it on paper. You know, when you write a brief, it means you've thought through things, you've thought through what's important to you as a brand, what you hope to achieve, um, you know, what's the big aim goal, what's the big aim goal, you know, what in the, what's the ultimate thing we could get out of this, but you've really thought it through, you've thought about all the considerations, and if you'd like us to share a creative brief with you, I'm happy to share our templates, um, if that would be useful, just so you can see from your, your own sides what sort of things brands are looking at, but, but being able to do that brief um, is, is a really good starting point. The second piece um, that comes back out of that is once you've done the brief, what we say to brands, which they find sometimes quite counterintuitive, is set it up really well and then step way back. Be confident and know that you're co-creating. You're not telling an artist what to do or how to do it. The benefit is in them, you know, creating something and being able to speak for your brand in a way you never could before. And I cannot tell you how powerful that is. Some of the very best press coverage we have had or campaigns we've done for clients has not been the client themselves, their spokesperson or their founder talking about their brands. It's an artist talking about how they engage, how they engage with the brand, what the brand means to them and, and, and what they create it for them. And that's incredibly powerful territory. And now is exactly the time when, when, when that's especially resonant. Um, and I think that piece also goes on to, you know, setting yourself up for success. When you're looking to do that piece, um, it's really important that you look at how you're going to measure it and what you need to get out of it each side. And this is the granular piece that sometimes it's a big surprise for artists when they're asked in a collaboration to be available, um, to do press interviews. And, um, you know, sometimes we work with, with, um, private family offices or high net worth individuals, and they genuinely want to give to an art cause. They don't want to be named. They don't want to in any way to raise their profile. 
that is very much in, 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 in the rare exception for the work that we do. You know, that is probably not where you're going to get um, your collaborative, collaborative work if, if you're looking for that. So know that it has to be something that works on both sides. And what does that mean? And this is the piece where for both sides, it's really important to be really, really granular about it. You know, so I think the question to ask yourself as an artist is, you know, why would they do it without you, you without being able to describe it? You know, and that's that's really an important point. So for us, what normally people are looking to do is they are normally wanting to announce the announce the partnership. And literally, when we work with partnerships, we do a timeline. So we talk about when we'd like to, and they want to get as much value out of this collaboration as they can. They want to be able to announce it. They want to be able to. Um, be with you probably when they're announcing it. They may want to announce it at a key juncture in the art calendar. That's something artists need to think about because you may be announcing something else, another show for galleries or arts institutions. You know, you may have a huge exhibition coming up and that's something that we have always had to be very respectful of. We're not gonna expect to cannibalize press coverage when somebody else has got freeze coming up or they're about to go to um, you know, to, to, to set off and do a whole bunch of events with their gallery in Miami, you know, for free, you know, so, so, those, so, for, um, so for our Basel. So those are things that are incredibly important that you're really clear on. But the first piece is how do you want to communicate it? What do you see your plan being? Announcement, then when you unveil the art itself, you know, how do they plan to communicate it? Do they plan to, um, um, sorry, I'm seeing a question pop up. <laughs> is that for me? No. It's actually from me. Yes. Hi. Oh, okay. Do you want to, do you want to answer the question to ask me the question? Uh, I actually do. Um, I, I, I know we're talking about uh, working with artists. What happens? I, I'm looking at the time and I know we want to save a little bit of time for questions, but what happens if you're a company like mine who wants to uh, collaborate with another arts based organization, not the artist per se? What do you, I, I mean, because I've made so many mistakes on collaborations, I've not had the creative brief. I mean, I'd love to see one because that's absolutely brilliant. I'm happy to share that. Um, I mean, I think the big thing is to, when you decide what each other wants out of it, how are you going to work together? Particularly, how are you going to, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm mostly through this actually. Um, so so it's, it's, it's deciding who's going to speak on what. Um, as I was just about to say to the artists, it's, it's deciding what time works for you, especially if, if you would have a different calendar, for instance, of what's important to you probably. Um, if you look at London Art Studies, you know, you're somebody who could really sell memberships at Christmas time as gifts. That's not necessarily tied into the art calendar. You, you could do that in a bunch of different ways. If you look at artists, you know, it really depends where they represent themselves you know, how they're working, but being able to be very open about what each other wants out of it. Um, what you definitely want to be able to do is to um, make sure that you can use yourself, you know, you can, you can have a conversation that would be really compelling to the press. How can they talk about um, what you do has inspired them? How can, how can you maybe work with them? Might they do some masterclasses for you? You know, how would that work with content? I, I think it's all really about being very, very open about what each other, what, what each side needs. But from the artist's side, be, be, be understanding that you are probably going to ask, be asked for those things. And when you are asked for those things, be really granular about it. If somebody wants to, to, to do PR, ask them, what channels do you want to do it on? You know, is it going to be just press? Do, you, do I need to turn up for them? How much time is that going to take? We put time in contracts for usually we need three or four half days for a collaboration. Are you going to have to be present for them? Can some of the work be filmed remotely beforehand? You know, if we get what about, the kind of, but what about artists' rights? What about? Well, as, I was just about to come on to that. I don't think artists should have to give up full, full, full um, rights to their work. What we usually recommend, and it's usually fair and cost-effective, is that we license the work for a period of time. I think that's incredibly important for artists because then they won't see a brand using their work 10 years down the line when they may have a very different orientation to, to or point of view. Um, and, and it's especially important that you think about where might they use this work. You know, if they're going to do, usually if we're collaborating with an artist, we want to do an exhibition, we might want to do a book, we definitely want to do a lot of content and filming um, and press work, and we probably want to have several launch moments, and usually we would do them globally in several locations. So we would usually ask people to license things by territory, so you know 
for instance, we would want to use this exit. We did a, a, a big exhibition with Franco Sazzani in Vogue Italia. Actually, we did two big partnerships. And, you know, we, we licensed it by country. Um, and in one instance, to be honest, we, the brand couldn't afford to do it uh, everywhere. So we picked out New York and London and, 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 and we then layered on. But usually you should pick which territories first. That's usually what's most cost effective for the brand. If artists layer on other location, other territories, they usually charge more. But what exactly do you get in that? And usually it should be a period of time that the artwork is licensed and they should not be able to use the work unless they've paid you. So you have to be very specific in how you set up a payment schedule. So, so they will expect to have access to that work and control over how you communicate about it. And all of those things would be part of your contract. But once that period is over, um, and it's really important for artists that they follow this really, really important that you get the paperwork right. What is really important to brands is they meet deadlines, um, that you're available to communicate, you are able, you are able to um, meet the deadlines, you're able to be at a press launch. So that means in advance, if you were going to be off on a, you know, on a project overseas somewhere for months, then you need to tell them that. And, and I guess that's the other really big cornerstone is making sure communications is really clear. You have a, a set point of contact, you know who you're working with. Sometimes artists want an agent or a gallery to work through the collaborations. Um, that can work, but there has to be a real alignment then in terms of who's working for them and, and with them on this process. If there's not enough access to the artists themselves or the, or, or the key people who are gonna be doing the work, that tends to cause problems because things aren't understood necessarily. So just being really aware of exactly, exactly what it is that you're, you're going to be needing to do um, is, is set out, is, is really, really important. And then what does success look like? You know, for you, Kate, it might be that part of success is that you have an opportunity to sell um, more memberships. You know, having both sides understand what they want. It might be for a, a department store, they want more footfall. It might be something like Vister Village. A lot of their art program is, is for everybody, but some of it's also for their high net worth guests where they have very bespoke programming. Just what most do you want to, to the outcome to be? And, and usually for brands, they want to sell and they want to raise their profile. So it's a combination of brand profile, which is about being generous as a brand and giving back and you know sharing art with, with bigger communities. But there's usually behind that a profile building piece. And we say in the collaborations, you're probably not going to, you know, you can't say, oh, I'm all of a sudden going to sell more dresses because I have a beautiful art installation in my shop. Um, but overall, you're raising your brand's image and you're engaging with people. So it's a longer term. And that's why we say you should be looking longer term. But still, there should be some metrics that come out of it. And I think one thing is important, too, that we have often set up bonus clauses for the artists that we work with. You know, and that means if the business does well, that you get a share in that. And that's quite entrepreneurial and it's not always common practice, but it's worked very well for us. They're not very complicated metrics, but they're things if we achieve what we want it to achieve and, and the, it, the, the program is well received, then, then the, the artists will get something extra. And sometimes we also, as part of that mutuality, we also undertake in the clause to pay for certain things for the artist. So very often we will say we will host your exhibitions, if you need us to, we will, we will fund them. Um, we may also say um, that we will, we will um, fund causes that are important to you. We do a lot of work also with supporting young talent in the fashion world. And again, in those instances, sometimes the, what they need is they need samples made for a collection. Sometimes they need just to be able to, to put on a catwalk show. You know, so all those sorts of things, we need to think too about what they need because sometimes some of the basics that they need, if they don't have them, they're not gonna be able to continue. So being able to have that dialogue, and that comes out really of having, having, a, having a, a long partnership. Um, so I, we have another question from Alexandra here, which is what's been the most successful, perhaps surprising industry or brand that you've done a collaboration with? And are there any industries you haven't worked with, which you think would be interesting, especially now? Um, great, great question. Um, I would say, I would say some of the work for Selfridges was it has been incredibly successful just in the power to use art to change. You know, in terms of um, when we worked with Selfridges on Project Ocean creating that, uh, you know, from the outset, it looked like it would be a nightmare. It was 
um, we worked with 45 NGOs and they became our main spokespeople for the project. I mean, you know, we had people from Prince Charles involved, Queen Noor, but then we had um, the head of Greenpeace, you know, which counterintuitively was quite a, a you know, a, a step change for, for a fashion retailer to take on. But what I think was, was successful about it was the fact that we were very confident. Um, we went from kind of being a platform for others to discuss and, and to educate and raise awareness to actually, we created a, a coined a, a phrase, retail activism. Um, and that was really about using the store and the power of the store and, and the engagement they have with their own audiences to, to, to foster change and to educate people um, and, and to be a platform for that, but then to be an active voice in it. Um, so I think that was incredibly exciting because it had many, many touch points. We had art installations, we had curated exhibitions, we had a, a sculpture installation, we had, um, there was many, many layers to it. And then a lot of it was about the science and about but marrying the science with the art um, to show what this drastic future could be if um, change, change wasn't made. In terms of ask, answering your question about um, uh, uh, sectors that we haven't worked with before, I mean, you know, we're all thinking about the healthcare systems right now, the NHS, um, science. Uh, those, are, those are areas that would be incredibly interesting for us to look at. And I think, I think there are real opportunities now for people to think about how to make the world feel better in a time like this. Uh, mental health is, is, is an enormously important issue right now. So are there things that, that where, where you might be able to create voices um, for people, for communities um, to, to, to inspire, but also to, to help people get help they need? You know, so I would say that space there is a particularly interesting one, but I also think there's a theme right now of everybody's suffering. You know, businesses are going to go out of business. Artists need to keep their studios open and keep working, and we have to be able to work together. And if people can collaborate to help each other, um, I mean, there's just extraordinary stuff happening right now, you know, whether it's people retooling in their factories or, you know, and it, and it has to be genuine. I would say collaborations shouldn't be skin surface deep. They should be about doing something good in the end. Um, but but those, those, those would be things that I would think about right now. Um, how to be part of people feeling positive, having a voice in this, in this, in this really unknown time. Um, and we've got another question from Ampierre, which is asking, um, do you proactively research and reach out to clients or do they come to you? Um, we're, really we're really lucky, I have to say, that we get a lot of our work comes to us directly because people have seen the work. They might come through journalists. Um, a lot of our clients are serial clients. We still work with our first clients from when I started the business. We, a lot of them we've worked with four or five times because they create new businesses or sometimes groups of investors who are behind brands. Um, but a lot of the time we get calls from somebody who saw an article said I could see my brand being described in this way. Um, we we um, have an accelerator program, we, which we do get people approaching us for a lot, where we work with female founded brands, um, sustainable brands. Um, so that's an interesting way. But you know, we also have a wish list of people we'd love to work with, people that inspire us. And I think for anybody working with people that inspire you, people you feel you can work well with, um, you know, it's important to go after those sorts of people and to, you know, if you could work with anybody, how do you spend your time? How do you use your time? Why not work with people that inspire you that, 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 that you think do great things? Gabrielle, I think that might be a lovely note to leave it on. Am I unmuted, Katrina Fox? Yeah. I'm muted. Good. I was going to say thank you. I think you've certainly inspired us all today. Um, and I think the takeaway perhaps is also that the sky's the limit right now in terms of collaboration. So do reach out. Uh, Lana's saying thank you. Goodbye, Lana. And I think Katrina's going to tell us all what we have in store. Gabrielle, thank you very much. This has been terrific. Thank you for having me. It was a great uh, to be here today. Thank you, Gabrielle. Uh, thank you, Kate. Um, uh, thanks for everyone to, uh, for joining today. I hope to see you all again tomorrow at 9 a.m. for a coffee morning and then again on Friday at 10 and 11. At 10 o'clock, we have Katie Hessel talking about communication in these changing times. Um, and then we have Soraya Rodriguez uh, after that. So, yeah, hopefully you can all join us uh, in upcoming days and all the updates are now on our website so if you have missed anything uh, please do check our website all the key takeaways are there in a written format 
thanks again, uh, everyone. I hope to see you soon. Oh, yes, and Sigrid's reminding us, please complete the survey if you haven't. Yes, Thank you. Uh, that's Thank finishing you. on Friday. <laughs> okay. Thank Take you, everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, everyone. Bye.